In today's Cubase quick tip, I'm going to show you how to use a drum map when using MIDI drums. So to begin, when you start using MIDI tracks or instrument tracks, it's likely that it'll be set up with the standard piano roll and no drum map assigned. And this is what it looks like. You have the MIDI notes with a various MIDI length per note. You also have the velocity and other MIDI data built into the editor and represented there. On the left hand side you have the piano roll. Here you can, you can preview the sounds by clicking on the keyboard. And this is totally fine, but with drums it's you don't really need the lengths so much and this section here doesn't really help you in any way it's not telling you what is the bass drum what is the the snare the hi-hats and whatever um, so this is not very useful it's very useful when you're doing instruments that have some sort of melodic content because this displays exactly what you want to know is the melodic content and you can see chords in the editor just by looking at the piano so Let's, uh, these, let's look at this program that I've made here. And when you have a MIDI track or an instrument track, when you go into the inspector window on the left, there's this little no drum map section. When you click on this, you can select the GM map. This, is, this stands for General MIDI Map, which comes stock in Cubase. So when you click on this, you'll see that the track is now recognized and switched to the drum map style of editor. This hasn't updated but you just double click on it and now it's updated. So when you first start using a drum map this is what you'll see in the editor window. There's a huge list of different instruments and then a huge list of basically nothing. But what you can do, so right now I have Groove Agent assigned and I've chosen a drum set that has 16 samples and there's patterns assigned to this and whatnot. And what you can do is on this top left hand section here, this drum visibility agents, instead of having this huge list of instruments that don't even have samples attached to it, if you click on this and say show drum sounds in use by instrument, Cubase can look for what's being used within Groove Agent or any other instrument um, and then it'll remove the list of instruments that have nothing assigned to it. So here you can see probably all this 16 um, instruments plus I think is all the 16 patterns attached to it. So this cleaned it up significantly. You can go ahead and audition just to make sure what actually has samples attached. Then you can start programming and then once you know you've found the sounds that you want to use, then you can click on show drums, uh, show drum sounds with events, and that cleans it up even more. So for me, this is what I want to use right now. Later on, if I feel like I want to add more sounds, I can go back to this, maybe start adding some other stuff, and then clean it up again, and everything's hunky dory. So when you're working with MIDI drums, Basically, all you need is a MIDI note that triggers a sample. Now, let me also explain, is in Groove Agent and many other um, sample style instruments like this here, um, or MPC style, you have the option of saying whether or not you want a specific sample to be a one-shot, to have no loop, which means you have to hold the MIDI note for the sample to play fully. Um, you might want to use continuous, all these different types of trigger modes. With drums it's very typical to have just the one shot which means as soon as you um, the MIDI note has been triggered it doesn't matter how long that MIDI note is played for the sample is going to be played fully and from start to end and that's it. So all you need is the MIDI note trigger and that's it. Um, if you're working in a different mode other than one shot 
you might need the note lengths. So in this case, this little dot will not be very useful. And what you can do is click this button, the show MIDI note lengths on and off. And then here you can actually adjust the note lengths. And this little drumstick tool, when you click on it, it will add a MIDI note. I'm clicking with the left mouse button and click the left left mouse button again and it will um, delete that note. If you click and hold the MIDI note you can go ahead and adjust the velocity. And I believe, let's say I have 78 there, yeah it'll always start from 100 so just keep that in mind. One more thing about MIDI note length is this button right here. This is where you can determine how long the MIDI notes are actually going to be. Let's say I always wanted my notes to be 1 8th in length. I can set it globally here. Now every time I click on it in the show note length mode or not, it will always be to what I've assigned it. Um, if you go to drum map link, that means that when you're in the drum map setup, Right here is this little quantize area. If I was to say um, my kick drums should always be one quarter length. Now when I go into here and click on the drum, it's going to be one quarter note length. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye bye.